Okay guys, in this uh, the second video, <clears throat> I have my MP8K hooked up. It's it's powered on. It's in it's in the run mode uh, for uh, using your MP8K and these uh, computer utilities that Dan wrote. They can just be in the run mode. Now on the Micro Pro Star, it actually needs to be in the calibrate mode. And I'll show you all that in the in the next video. But for the MP8K, it just needs to be on, connected, and in the run mode. Now, remember before I said before we can run these programs, we're going to have to add the COM port number that our computer assigned when we plugged in the cable, and put it on the command line for the shortcuts to run these three programs. And I'm going to have to actually do it because when I plugged my USB cable back in, it changed it from COM port 12 to COM port 13. So uh, let me show you real quick. When I first downloaded these programs from, uh, from Dan's site, I extracted all the zip files into this one utilities folder. So here's where all the programs are. Now you need to find the actual the application, so in this case the MP8K to PC program, right click on it and come down here to send to, desktop create shortcut. Do that for each of the three programs, the diagnostic and the owner's name, and it's going to create these shortcuts on the desktop. So then to run them, let's start with the um, the owner's name utility. To add the COM port to the command line, you're going to want to right click on the shortcut, go to properties, and here's the command line right here. So it has the actual executable here, and that's what you'll see. This was from when I added the COM port number before. So the first time you do this, it's not going to say anything after the .exe, so you need to create a space after the .exe, and then put COM, and then your COM port number. In my case, I need to change this to 13, uh, because when I, when I unplugged my cable prior to doing this video, I plugged it back in and assigned it a different COM port number. So you always need to double check that. Okay, so once you make that change, you're going to want to click on Apply and then OK. But I wanted to point something out. The first time I added this, I had a space between the COM and the COM port number. So I had COM space 1-2. The program won't run. You can't have that space there. So as you can see here, mine has COM13 with no space, so you need to ensure that yours is like that too. You can have a space after the .exe, but no space is here between COM and the COM port number. So let me go ahead and apply that. Click OK. My radio is on. It's in the run mode. So let's go ahead and execute this owner's name utility. If you get a warning from your your antivirus, go ahead and just click run. And this is what's going to pop up. So it's already read what I currently have programmed in there, which is my name. And then if you want to change that, you just you enter a new name. So how about we'll be Ted Nugent today. Okay. Now it is, um, I believe it's uh, caps sensitive so if you want to have a combination of caps and lowercase or all caps or all lowercase whatever the case may be you can do that okay so once you enter your name click the enter button it's going to let you know what you typed is this okay yes or no yes type a Y and then hit enter name written Ted Nugent press enter to exit so then you come over here to the radio. Let me, um, I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna put this camera down for just a second. You have to shut the radio off and then hold the option button while you turn the power on and it'll actually have 
the uh, the name down there. So let me go ahead and shut this off. Let me hold that button down, turn it on. Ted Nugent. So it was successful. So that's how you do that one. Now let's go and run the other two. So let me show you this uh, MP8K to PC shortcut. This program is basically for um, taking a snapshot of what you have pro pro uh, programmed into the model memories on your MP8K, and then you can store those model memories, uh, those models separately in uh, whatever folder you want to put them in on your computer. And then you can later go back and pick what models that you have saved on the computer and have them transferred to the radio and plug them into whatever model memory you want, any of the eight model memories. So I haven't really created too much on this radio yet since I just got it here recently. Oh, let me cancel this because i got to go in again on the command line. Properties. And I need to change that COM port to... 13 Y, okay. We're going to go ahead and run it. It's going to say loading MP8K names. And then this is what pops up. So as you can see here, the PC file path, you have to manually type that in. It doesn't have like a browse button where you can browse to whatever folder you want. Um, so I have a specific folder that I have it pointed to for MP8K model setups, I think is what I called it. And uh, so whatever, this is what's actually on the MP8K right now. So I have a model memory for a fun jet, for my Super Zoom, which is a 3D foam plane, and a SIG Cadet Mark II. Okay, so... If I want to save these to the PC, you have to do them one at a time. So let's, I'm going to save my cadet. So it says to PC file, cadet mark two. It'll save it in whatever folder you have in this PC file path. It's going to give you a ask you a question here from mp8k number three to pc file cadet mark two yes uh, got a problem here let's see let me double check where i have these going to mp8k Let me look in my folder real quick here. MPAK model setups. So this should be MPAK model setups. Okay, let's try that. Let me try that one more time. To PC, yes. Okay, so I think it actually saved it. Yep, here it is right here. So I had the wrong, I had a folder name that didn't exist in there. I don't know how I did that. So once I, once I fix that file path to that folder, it saved it just fine, as you can see here, MP8K, MP8K model setups. So here is my model setup for the cadet. So then what, if you want to transfer them to the radio, here's the two, the only two that I have saved on my PC will show up over here. Same as what's on, in the actual folder. That's where it's pulling, this is pulling that information from. So then let's say, right currently I have the cadet in, um, in model memory number three on the radio. 
So let's say I want to put it in model memory 4, or I'm sorry, model memory 5, which is currently open on the radio. And let's say I want to have that second iteration of it so that I can maybe set it up as an alternate aircraft. So I can kind of play around with my settings. So we're, we're wanting to put Cadet Mark II into model memory location number 5 and then click to MP8K from PC file, Cadet Mark II to MP8K number five. Yes, and it's gonna give you this little progress error down here in the status bar. And then when it's done writing to the radio, it's gonna reload the, uh, the names that are loaded on the radio. So in this case, I have FunJet, Super Zoom, Cadet Mark II. I have a second Super Zoom setup in there. And here's the Cadet Mark II that we plugged into slot number five on the radio. So that's how that works. So again, you could have unlimited number of model memories saved on your computer since you're limited on how many you can have on the MP8K. You can only have eight. So you can kind of mix and match what you have loaded on your radio by hooking it up here to the computer. So basically it's using this program as an extended model memory in essence. So that's how that program works. We'll go ahead and click quit to get out of it. And I'll close this one. And then lastly, we'll do the diagnostic program. Click on properties, change this COM port to 13. Apply, okay. Go ahead and run it. And this basically gives you a graphical representation of where all your um, pots and uh, switches are to include your mixes. Like let's say it's this mix one over here. When I flick the switch, it changes from off to on. And let's see, I'm gonna turn my elevator dual rate on. It goes from low rate to high rate, etc., etc. And then I don't have my sticks currently on here, so let me move. Let's see, I'm moving the throttle stick there. And then that's the rudder. So you can verify, you know, that all your uh, trims and pots for your sticks, all your switches are working, etc. If you're wanting to do any kind of troubleshooting or kind of see how they're lined up on a particular model memory. And uh, that's pretty much that program. So again, I was quite happy to, uh, to figure this all out and get it working. Uh, the thing that I did wrong, of course, is what Dan pointed out <clears throat> from my earlier post. When I posted the picture of how I wired that RJ12, you only need those three wires, the orange, the yellow, and the black. And... Uh, Make sure you have the correct drivers. Make sure when you go to um, your device manager that it's showing up as a USB serial converter and it's also assigning it a COM port number. And uh, make sure that you go back and update your command lines to add that COM port number on your shortcuts for those three programs. And you should have success running them on Windows 7.